2021 has brought its challenges, especially when it comes to finding the GPU, if you're looking to build a PC, right? It is so difficult and it's so damn expensive. But Intel has released a product that will change all of that for you. I'm talking about the Intel Phantom Nook. This is a game changer. Now, a Nook or Intel Nook is a miniaturized PC and this one has gaming capabilities. Now, I've covered Nooks in the past and this is about maybe five or six years ago. Uh, they were great if you wanted to do small desktop kind of performance and that's pretty much it. Now, this changes the game because this is powered by 11 gen Tiger Lake processor uh, and a RTX 2060 GPU. So when you think about gaming, you can actually do that with something this small. So imagine something like the Mac Mini in size. You're looking at it right here, but with gaming specs packed in. So handling a Nook is pretty easy and simple. They do come bare bones and it is very easy to upgrade it with what you want. You can also buy them with, you know, of course, included a hard drive or whatever you want. Now, this unit came from Intel. I was able to upgrade it with the brand new um, Samsung 980 MVME, uh, which does speeds of 3,500 uh, megabits per second, which is great. And I also have a saving drive as well. So I can have two MVMEs in here. And I, I had 16 to 32 gigabytes of RAM. I actually started with 16 and I swapped out to 32. Again, you can do that. And as simple as basically you open up the screws and then of course installing it in there. Kind of feels like you're upgrading the laptop, if you will. But in terms of extras on this unit, it's got a ton. You've got an SD card slot, you've got two Thunderbolt slots, you've got six USB uh, ports, USB 3.1, a headphone jack. You've also got a HDMI port as well as a display port which is nice. So you've got all the connections you need. Again, it feels like a PC, but it's again, very, very small. So what's really cool about its form factor is that I can place it anywhere on my desk uh, because of its small size. I can put it in the corner. I can tuck it behind my monitor. And it's great if you've got a small apartment, small home, or even a smaller home office like I do, which makes it very unique in terms of placement. So I can hide it anywhere. I could actually even create a bracket underneath my desk to put this and it will fit quite well. The other thing, of course, about it is, is some of the features. It's got built-in Bluetooth as well as Wi-Fi 6.0, which brings us to our sponsor in this video, MediaTek. Now, MediaTek offers a lot of uh, devices that support Wi-Fi 6, including the brand new Belkin Wi-Fi 6 router. This is the Belkin uh, AX3200. What's great about this router is that, of course, it supports the, uh, the MediaTek SoC, giving you Wi-Fi 6 capabilities. So for devices like my uh, Intel Nook here, uh, I do have the ability to use the fastest speeds possible and I don't have to have the router within the same room. It covers a range of about 2,000 feet so I have it in another room in the home and I still have the same kind of connectivity across the board which is great. So definitely check out the link below to find out more about what MediaTek offers in terms of Wi-Fi 6 products and use the link down below. Now with all that performance baked into this device, how well does it perform gaming wise? What is the kind of performance we expect to see? I didn't run the games of 4K because of course you've got a 2060 in there, but it's a nice looking monitor and it fits quite well on the desk. Uh, and in terms of performance, we'll start off with a game like Cyberpunk 2077, which is a very intense game. My settings there were on high and I was able to play the game at roughly 55 to 62 frames per second, which is quite decent for it. I could actually tweak it a little bit more to get a little higher performance, but it ran pretty well. Now, of course, Call of Duty Warzone is a game that I do like to play, and this system has allowed me to play it at home now more because I now have a PC in my house. And with Call of Duty, I was able to play Call of Duty 1080p at roughly between 55 to about 63 frames per second. Again, solid performance all the way through. I could game well, I noticed no slowdowns. And again, that monitor is really nice. The monitor also supports up to 120 frames per second, which is pretty cool. One millisecond response time, great. Great monitor altogether. Of course, you've got RGB lighting in the back and all that fun stuff. Now, when you look at games like Battlefield 5, you can get up to about 65 frames per second on that, uh, which is cool and good to see, as well as also, um, you know, games like Apex, you're getting uh, about 75 frames per second. So a lot of great performance from this Nook that I think a lot of people like. Now you're thinking, wow, Thunder E, this is really great. This is a great device. What about, uh, you know, 
sound and heat. Now in terms of heat dissipation, it is standard for this device. It does run rather warm, especially when you tap on that Skull logo, which is right in front. Uh, it's really beautiful to look at that logo, but it's warm and it's nothing too crazy. The fans do kick in, but there's enough cooling with it, so it's not too loud. Uh, you can definitely hear the fans, but nothing crazy in that respect. Now, the downside to having a device like this, is, of course, is you have to customize it. So you have to go in, increase your storage options or your memory options. The other downside that most people probably won't tell you that if you're buying it bare bones, it truly is bare bones, meaning hardware bare bones as well as software bare bones. So when I got this device, I had to basically download my Wi-Fi drivers from my laptop to install onto this device. So that's something you're gonna find that a lot of the, the the ports and functions all need to be updated uh, to full spec once you actually get it connected to the internet. So from things like your SD card slot to your display port, all have to be updated. That's just a big warning there. Now the other downside, it also comes with a rather large uh, power brick, which is a bit unusual. So you kind of treat it like a laptop because most of the components in here are from a laptop. But I think overall, I do like this device. And I think especially now where finding the GPU is just damn impossible, especially for the price point. I think you really will like this device. If you're looking for a PC, especially with its price point uh, for around 1300 or so, depending where you're picking it up from. Uh, the one thing I will note is that Intel, please uh, have a direct link to this device where people can buy it because it's really hard to find on the web. Now, I forgot to mention the keyboard I was using while I was gaming throughout this whole session uh, is the ROG Falcono keyboard. It's a 60% keyboard. Great features altogether, RGB keyboard. Uh, it's got a nice small form factor. You've got volume controls on the side. Really cool altogether. Check out the full review on my gaming channel, Board Gamer. So go ahead and check it out over there. If you have any questions, any comments, let me know. Otherwise, don't forget to like, share, and always enjoy your entertainment.